Hello, now a few weeks ago on this channel, I made a video called Scotland to Germany in an EV towing a caravan. And it was meant to purely be a documentary, a diary of exactly what it was like, my personal journey from Eurist to Dusseldorf. And I compared it to my personal journeys before uh, with my Nissan Navara. Unfortunately, a few people got the wrong end of the stick uh, they thought I had some kind of an agenda when purely I was just trying to show what the journey was like. So I thought I would try and put some of that right today in this video. And this is going to be about actual the pros and cons and the myths and the truths about towing a caravan with an electric vehicle and help you decide is an EV for you. So we'll start with the advantages, the pros, why I chose to invest my own money into an EV to tow my caravan. Now, I was lucky enough to have some experience of towing with electric cars and it simply blew me away. So let's talk about the advantages of towing a caravan with an electric car. So what's the good part about driving with an electric car? Well, the first time I ever towed with an electric car, my mind was blown. The, it was so smooth, so powerful, quiet, stress-free, vibration-free, and it was just amazing. And I knew then I had to have an electric car as my tow car. A lot of those advantages are at slower speeds, maneuvering and in town. So let's go back to Ferry Meadows and talk about some of the advantages on site. So one of the great things about the electric car is the, oh, the stress-free maneuvering on site. You've got no revs going everywhere. You've got no noise. It's currently half past seven in the morning. And um, I'm making an early start today and you know there's no engine noise disturbing my neighbors and there's no revs so i don't have to worry about anything like that it's just quiet serene i can turn that off and there we have it So we're all hitched up, it's half past seven in the morning. Nothing left behind, no. And it's just so quiet. They actually have to make this artificially generated noise for pedestrians and cyclists. I think since about 2019. But even that is really quiet and subtle. It's so lovely. So there you have covered some of the main advantages. Now, I'm not using a microphone here. We're on the A1, we're doing 60 miles an hour. And you can hear it's fairly quiet in the cabin. The, the biggest noise we have is the noise of the tires on the tarmac. There's no other noise. Even the, the shape of the uh, EV6 means that there's barely any wind noise either, so that's great. At the moment, running costs of an EV are substantially cheaper than a petrol or diesel car. That might change in the future, but right now they are considerably cheaper, even with the price of some of the high-speed charging on the motorway network, which we'll talk about later in the video. And also, if you are using your car mostly for short journeys for work, like if you're commuting every day, 50 miles or whatever, and you have off-road parking, that's another thing. If you have off-road parking at your home, then you have the convenience of charging your car at home overnight. And not in normal use, you never have to worry about stopping at the fuel station to fuel your car. It's only when you'll be doing long trips or towing trips of over 100, 125 miles when you would need to stop at a fuel station. So you've got all those advantages, but the main one for me, the main advantage is the driving experience. It is 
I keep laboring it, but it's so true. The talk, the power, the stability, the quiet cabin, the serenity. It is so, so lovely. And despite all the drawbacks, which I'm just gonna talk about, I wouldn't want to go back to a petrol or diesel car. Some people have, some people have found the charging, which we'll talk about in the, the downsides, some people have found that too stressful and they've had to go back to the petrol or diesel car. Me, I'm prepared to put up with the charging stress because this is phenomenal. So that's the driving experience, why I really went for an EV. And then why I went for a Kia EV6 is for the V2L. V2L stands for Vehicle to Load. It's currently available on the Kia EV6 and the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and a similar system will be available on the Volkswagen ID Buzz. And what it means is that you can power up to 13 amps of 220 volts from the car, which is ideal for an electric hookup on a caravan. Here, I'm at a CS in Yorkshire without a mains hookup, it's only nine pound a night, but I can still use the microwave to warm up the milk for my coffee. So I can't stress how much I love towing with this car, but there are of course downsides. What are the downsides, the cons, of towing a caravan with an electric car. One of the downsides is, of course, the upfront purchase cost. Battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles are more expensive than their diesel and petrol counterparts. However, you might be able to offset this. If it's a company car, you can offset it with a lower benefit in kind tax. And as I'll explain in a moment, they still have lower running costs than their petrol and diesel equivalents. Now probably the biggest downside of towing with an EV is charging it when you're on the road. It's the biggest obstacle really to widespread EV ownership among caravanners because in 90% of cases, you're gonna to need to detach the caravan to charge the car. That is a faff. Also, if you can't park the caravan next to the car as I have here, you're going to have to leave it somewhere else, maybe in a caravan parking area, away from the chargers, and there are security implications connected to that, which I will cover in another video. Also, so the layout of some motorway service areas means that they're strictly one way. You can't go back to the caravan after charging the car or vice versa. So, And also, the charging network in the UK is not as robust as it should be. There are too many broken chargers or chargers just out of commission, whatever. So all in all, the biggest downside, the biggest obstacle of towing with an EV at the moment is on the road, charging it could be so much better with just a little bit of thought from the charging networks but hopefully as more and more people start towing with evs we will start to see the improvements that we so desperately need connected with the downside of charging is the fact that you need to plan your journey far more carefully with a battery electric vehicle you need to plan your charging stops carefully and you also need to check out the motorway service areas on Google Maps to make sure that you won't be stuck the wrong side of a one-way system. Now, apart from the purchase price and the faff of charging, the other downside, the drawback of having an electric vehicle is other people. Some people will tell you what they think even if you didn't ask for their opinion. They've gleaned their facts from Twitter or Facebook, and they will tell you what they think, whether you've invited their opinion or not. In other words, some people can get very defensive about the whole subject of electric vehicles, and trust me, I know. That defensive behavior can manifest itself in verbal or written attacks, fabrication or gaslighting, calling the other person stupid or ill-informed. So why do some people get so defensive about the subject of electric vehicles. Clinical psychologist Seth Myers wrote, someone gets defensive as a means of avoiding accountability. 
Psychologists agree that defensive behaviour has the purpose of protecting the individual from feelings of hurt and shame. The objective is to shift attention to the faults of the other person to feel better about themselves in the short term. The sad thing is, in the longer term, such people actually feel worse about themselves. We also have to remember that the fossil fuel industry is phenomenally rich and it uses some of that wealth to support opinion and policy that protects its own interest. So there you have the pros and the cons, the advantages, disadvantages of towing a caravan with an electric vehicle. Now let's move on to some truths and some myths. Many of the comments to that video about towing from Scotland to Germany with an EV towing a caravan were very informed, respectful, and even if they didn't agree with what I was doing, they were respectful and informed, but some of the comments were anything but. So let's review a few of those and file them under truth or myth. You're pushing the EV agenda. Myth. I'm just a man in a van doing his thing, but some people get really defensive about it for reasons we now understand. EVs are green. Myth. Over their whole lives, EVs are greener than petrol and diesel cars. They do emit more carbon in their manufacture than a petrol or diesel car, but they emit less carbon in use. It's agreed that you need to drive an EV around 60,000 miles to offset the additional carbon created in their manufacture, and then you start creating less carbon than an internal combustion engine car. Remember that EVs lack tailpipe emissions, which makes for cleaner air in cities and around busy roads. The electricity that powers EVs is generated by burning coal. Myth. According to the National Grid, in 2020, renewable energy accounted for 43.1% of the UK's electricity generated, outstripping fossil fuels over the course of the year. In 2010, fossil fuels accounted for over 75% of the UK's electricity generation. In 2021, that was down to just 35%. Figures for Scotland are even better. While Scotland could produce 97% of its electricity from renewables, it exports some of this power. But the figures are still encouraging, with 56% of the energy consumed in Scotland coming from renewables and just 13% from fossil fuels. Given the current energy crisis, you could end up paying a higher cost per mile in an EV than in a petrol or diesel equivalent. Truth. I've done some calculations on the assumption that you get 25 miles per gallon towing and 40 miles per gallon solo at today's prices. The cutoff point between paying more for an EV than you would petrol or diesel is 70 pence per kilowatt hour towing and about 87 pence per kilowatt hour solo. GridServe is the most prolific motorway network and it charges about 50 pence per kilowatt hour rapid charging. Shell is 66 pence per kilowatt hour. Connected Curb, which is just rapid charging, is 35 pence. Podpoint at Lidl is 28 pence for a rapid charge. And Podpoint at Tesco is often free, but that's a slow charge. So these are still much lower than the cutoff points of 70 pence and 87 pence. However, with the projected increases in energy costs, while one or two charging sessions might end up being more expensive than the fossil fuel equivalent, the overall running costs of an EV look set to remain lower than their petrol or diesel equivalents. We can't generate enough electricity to cope with widespread EV uptake. Myth. 
Now, renewable energy can and will satisfy our demand, but of course it's dependent on the forces of nature, which don't always coincide with the peaks and troughs of demand. We need a way of storing the excess renewable energy and releasing it back into the grid at times of peak demand, something known as grid balancing. And ironically, one of the best solutions for grid balancing is the adoption of electric vehicles because they can store the energy in their batteries when it's times of excess production and then release it back into the grid when it's needed. The battery will be useless in just a few years. Myth. According to Car Magazine, there are so many cells in a typical EV battery that they retain capacity even after hundreds of thousands of miles. Although they won't perform as well as when box fresh and new, they will keep holding charge for many, many years to come. And the internet is full of high mileage electric and hybrid cars still working well into their dotage. The expected electric car battery life is at least a decade. And our advice is your car will fall apart before your battery fails. To back this up, most manufacturers offer warranties on the batteries of between 7 and 10 years and up to 100,000 miles. Hydrogen technology will make battery electric vehicles redundant. Maybe. Some people are holding out for hydrogen, saying that hydrogen is going to be the answer. Well, maybe. Hydrogen certainly has the advantages of faster fill-ups and greater energy density, but it has the huge disadvantage is that it is less efficient. According to Dr. Alan Jones and Dr. Martin Nielsen at Lexology.com, a battery electric vehicle is 80% efficient. 5% of energy is lost at charging. Battery charging and discharging loses a further 10% and the motor wastes 5%, giving a total loss of 20%. A hydrogen fuel cell vehicle is only 38% efficient. Electrolysis is only 75% efficient. The gas is compressed, chilled and transported, which loses a further 10%. Converting hydrogen back to electricity is only 60% efficient. And then you have the same 5% loss from the motor. This makes for a total energy loss of 62%, three times greater than battery. In other words, for each kilowatt of energy, a battery electric vehicle returns 800 watts and hydrogen only 380 watts, less than half. We also have to remember that right now in the UK, 95% of all hydrogen produced comes from fossil fuels. Now, according to Auto Express on the 31st of January 2022, hydrogen is a viable alternative to battery technology, but one of the biggest drawbacks at the moment in the UK is the lack of infrastructure. We only have 11 hydrogen filling stations. Now, in terms of carbon emissions, green hydrogen, that is hydrogen made with water and electrolysis, which accounts for only 5% of all hydrogen made in the UK at the moment, that is actually favourable, better for the environment than the production of lithium ion batteries. But solid state batteries are on the way and they could be the answer. Solid state batteries will render existing lithium ion batteries obsolete in the next year or two. Myth. Now the development of solid state batteries is very, very exciting. Unlike lithium ion batteries, they do not rely on precious metals. They offer a faster charging time and they offer greater energy density so you can get more power into a smaller battery. Now, despite the fact we could be seeing solid state battery vehicles on the road quite soon, it's going to be about 10 years before we see widespread adoption of solid state batteries. And in those 10 years, lithium ion technology is still improving. So to sum up, is an EV for you? 
Well, the good news is, folks, I am not sponsored by any motoring manufacturer or any large organization, so I'm not obliged to come down on one side or the other. I can be completely independent with you. Now, if you're in the market for a new car over £40,000, you tow less than 120 miles at a time, or you are prepared to put up with the faff of detaching the caravan every time you need to charge the car, then I would seriously recommend you consider an EV because the driving experience, the towing experience is sublime. If you are going to tow regularly more than 120 miles or you're not prepared to put up with the faff of detaching the caravan where you need to charge the car and you're in the market for a new car over £40,000, then maybe consider a plug-in hybrid. You get a lot of the advantages of an EV maneuvering the caravan on site and on shorter journeys, especially without the caravan, but you have the backup of a petrol engine. Now, of course, you can have higher running costs with uh, a plug-in hybrid, and of course, there's a bit more to go wrong. You're lugging around the battery when you don't need it, and vice versa. You're lugging around an engine when you're using the motor, so they're less efficient, but they're a great halfway house between uh, a petrol car, a petrol or diesel car, and an EV, so maybe consider a plug-in hybrid. But if you are not in the market for a new car yet, and you're happy with what you've got, then stick with what you've got, because the longer you stick with what you've got, the better EV technology is going to be. We'll know more about whether hydrogen is going to become a realistic proposition, whether, whether solid state batteries are going to take over from lithium ion batteries. Things are only going to get better as far as EVs go. So if you're happy with the petrol and diesel car you've got, then keep it because the greenest car is the car you've already got. So I hope you found this video useful, folks. As I said, I'm not uh, sponsored or anything by any motoring manufacturers, so if you did find value in this video and you're feeling flush, do feel free to buy us a coffee. I'll leave a link in the description below this video. But more importantly, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't already, and it just leaves me to say from Dougal, who's in the back, and from me, thanks for turning in. Onward. Bye. If you would like to find out more about touring with an EV, be it tent camping, towing a caravan or folding camper, or touring in one of the new electric camper vans or imminent motorhomes, or if you already go camping or caravanning with an EV, then please check out my new newsletter, Electric Touring and join the growing community of those of us who tour with electric vehicles. By getting together and combining our voices, we can hopefully speed up the changes that need to happen to make electric touring a smoother and more widely attractive proposition. There's a link to electric touring in the description below this video. Bye.